guys, welcome to part three of our flower alley experiment. So in the first couple of videos, we've already planted up four containers. Today we are planting up three and the whole experiment is Aaron and I decided to get 10 of the exact same pot and plant them all up differently with very simple arrangements, utilizing only three or four plants, just to show you some ideas on smaller scale arrangements, as well as experimenting with different flower combinations, seeing what works well together, seeing what doesn't, and seeing just how they grow and progress throughout the season. So we plan on giving you lots of progress reports throughout this year. So I've already got these pots prepped. In the first video, I went over how we're running our drip in these containers. So I've already got that all set up. I've got our soil and our continuous release fertilizer. So what I'm gonna do is move these two containers off, bring my plants up for the first container and we will start planting. So in our first container, I wanna focus on the color yellow. I want this one to be a really bright and happy looking. I do have diamond snow. It is all white, but I thought that this would bring a nice sparkle to the arrangement. And diamond snow is the smallest of the three euphorbias. So then you've got diamond frost and diamond mountain, but this one provides so much bulk of color. I just dipped it in the soil, so I got it a little dirty, but the bloom to leaf ratio on this plant always amazes me. It's just like this little block of white color. It's awesome. So I'm gonna put that one in first. And I'm hoping, like this one does, doesn't intermingle quite as much as your Diamond Frost or Diamond Euphorbia, just based on the fact that it stays a little smaller. So 12 to 18 inches tall and 10 to 12 inch spacing. So I think that is a great one. And then our next flower is Lady Godiva Yellow Calendula. I've talked about this plant quite a bit. In fact, we did a dedicated video on this plant because I wintered some over in our greenhouse this last year. I don't know if you can see it back there, but we have a like a tiered planter. It's a green stock garden and I planted calendulas and some strawberries in there and the calendulas got so big that eventually the strawberries kind of fizzled. They weren't getting enough sun, but they have wintered over in here. They are a zone seven through 11 and we are a zone five six so the fact that they wintered over is amazing and they're huge and beautiful and then we did a, a video about calendula salve and how to make that so it's a really versatile plant like not only does it provide you with a ton of color throughout the season but the flowers are edible you can use it medicinally it's just like an all-around really awesome plant so the next one i want to use is also an all yellow so i'm going to put it on the opposite side of this one and I would twist this container, but it's really hard because it's I've got the uh, drip tube running through one of the slats of the table so it sits level. But we'll try to get some pictures afterward. This is called Goldilocks Rocks Bidens. I not only love the blooms of this because they're like daisy-ish blooms and they're pretty good size, but I like the leaf structure. I think it's got a like a very dainty kind of ferny looking leaf structure that's really pretty. And this one will grow about 12 to 14 inches tall. I don't really have an exact centerpiece for this container. I think it's all gonna just grow in one big mass, which should be really nice. Okay, for this last plant, I'm gonna attempt to do a complete turn of this pot here. Hold on, so you can at least see it. There we go. Okay, so since this one doesn't have a centerpiece, it technically doesn't really have a back. It'll be pretty from all different angles. This is a Super Bells called Lemon Slice. So again, this one has a little bit of white in it, so I wanted to put it opposite each other. But Lemon Slice is always such a happy, happy flower. I remember down at the garden center, whenever we would get these in, they would fly out of the door faster than we could put them out. Like they would be on the pallets waiting for us to display them and we, they would never make it up to the actual like nursery portion uh, where we just dis displayed and sold plants. So it's a really amazing one. So four plants, and this is a 14 inch container. This is the Garland Jardinier from Unique Stone. Uh, I think it's gonna be a really fun one to watch grow. So now we'll move on to container number two. Let me get all set up. Container number two, I think is gonna be a really beautiful blend and it's kind of uh, autumnal in color tones and it includes one of my favorite annuals that exists. This is the Golden Dreams Coleus. It's not the first one I'm gonna plant. Let's actually start on this side because I'm gonna try to do this one from front to back instead of back to front like I just did, making it a little bit easier. Um, so the first one here is a Super Bells called Double Amber. I believe it's new this year. I had a chance to grow it last year. I had it in window boxes and in uh, several different containers and it really did well. It looks so delicate, but it held its own. It really beefed up and spread out. And I love the double blooms and I love the apricot amber color that they have. I think it's just so pretty. I think it's going to be gorgeous 
with this coleus because I planted the Golden Dreams next to Carding Mill Roses last year, which have a very similar coloring to this, and it was my favorite view in the entire garden all of last year. It was my favorite blend of plants, and I'm really fighting the urge to plant the exact same thing, like to plant more Golden Dreams around those roses this year because it was so pretty. Next plant, I'm also doing four plants clearly in this container, is a Sweet Caroline Red Hawk Ipomoea. So a sweet potato vine, I like the depth of color in this one. You still get a little bit of green in the new growth, but it has this really deep kind of purpley reddish color. And I don't think this one spreads out quite as much as some of them, 12 to 18 inch spacing on it. Um, but this will be a really beauty, be beautiful one. <laughs> I think we'll have to uh, do maybe a little trimming toward the end of the season because these containers aren't super tall. There was a question, and I just talked about it in our recap video, about whether or not I'm actually pushing the root balls right up to the edge of the container. And I'm not, there's usually like when I make my well, and I don't know if you can see this, when I make my well in the container for the root ball, I always squish some soil up against the rim like that. So there's always a soil buffer between the root ball and the edge of the container, if that helps. Okay, golden dreams. Now I am pushing the envelope a little bit here because these get massive. So I'm going to have to be doing some pruning with this on this one. And I'm okay with that. I think it's going to be, it's gonna kind of be our centerpiece plant because it will get the biggest. I do have another layer kind of down here that we'll talk about in a second, but I think, I think it'll work well. Isn't that beautiful, the amber with this? I don't know what it is about that color combination, but it just speaks to me. And then the very last plant, now I've grown uh, osteospermums before, they're African daisy, but I've never grown this color before. It's called uh, Bright Lights Red, and it's really a pleasing color of red to me. It's almost, I don't even know how to explain it. There's like a back color, like kind of a peachy kind of color to it that makes it have a little bit of a glow. That's why I think it goes so well with the super bells. And the fact that it kind of mirrors a little bit of the veining color on the Golden Dreams is awesome. So we're gonna tuck that one in. What do you think of that blend? I think it's gonna be beautiful. So the coleus will take off and it'll fill in this whole area right here, like over the top of the super bells. I expect the super bells to kind of drape over the side. Our next layer down, I'll have to keep the coleus kind of off of this one, I'm guessing. This one will grow like, I think 10 to 12 inches tall or so. So it'll be a nice second layer to our coleus. And then both of these, like this one will fill in a little bit unless the coleus kind of goes over the top of it. But both of these will kind of just drape over the side and I think they'll end up blending really beautifully together. So it just really doesn't take much to create something really beautiful. Okay, time for container number three. And the last container today, I'm using three different kinds of super bells and they all have the word punch in, in their name. So we've got strawberry punch first off, which I really like this color. I think it's the sweetest looking super bells. Like out of all three of these, this is my favorite for sure. It's got just a really pleasing color of pink, kind of like a pinkish red and then the yellow throat. And then we've got the super bells black current punch which has the vivid, bright, like fuchsia pink, and then the darker purple, the yellow throat, and then we've got watermelon punch right here. So this has kind of a corally pink, and then a red, and then a yellow throat. So this is just pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna plant these in every third of the pot. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, and then I think it's gonna be really fun to see these grow in together. And honestly, I have the best luck when I plant super bells with super bells. Um, and I've done a lot of mixed containers this year with super bells with other things, but and we'll see how they do. When I have them on drip irrigation, I do have a lot better luck, but if I'm hand watering, I just have a be much better luck putting super bells on their own because they like to dry down a little bit between waterings um, as opposed to a lot of your other annuals. Um, so keep that in mind. They're not suitable really for landscape planting. They are much better for containers or hanging baskets, especially like your smaller reservoir hanging baskets that tend to dry out a little quicker, these can stand up to that, those sort of conditions a little bit better. Won't that be beautiful? Because it'll create like this beautiful domed mat because they will grow, um, like if they're not being shrouded by a coleus or something like I just did in my last pot, 
um, they will grow six to 12 inches tall. So we might get a nice big mound and then we'll have a cascade effect over the sides. I'm gonna go grab a cart so we can haul these over to Flower Alley because we have our first four containers over there already. Um, and then we'll add these to them and then we'll add our next three when we're done with those. So anyway, let me go do that. All right, so this is where we decided to put Flower Alley. It's not really an alley, it's up against a fence, but it'll kind of create a Flower Alley as we go through here. At first, we thought we would do it on either side. And then we decided all 10 pots might look really pretty together on this side. So our first four here, they're looking really good. We've had quite a bit of rain and quite a bit of wind and they're doing great. We haven't even hooked them up onto the drip system yet. And then here are today's containers right here. We'll work on leveling all of these up and getting them hooked onto the drip system. And then we have three more, which will probably take us, I'm guessing to about like right here. So it'll be a really pretty little area. And I did make sure to bump them away from the fence. I might even go a little bit further so that that one's away from the Arborvita. Um, so they have plenty of room all the way around the pots for the flowers to like spill over properly and not get hung up on anything else. So anyway, that's what we decided to do this year. We had water access right there. Erin actually trenched a line over. It comes straight from that faucet over to here, right? And then it splits over and goes that way. We need to put a little bit more gravel over it there. And then you can see on this side where we were gonna, we were gonna tuck it underneath the boxwoods and then have more containers, which you never know since the water's here, we'll probably leave it and tuck it under the boxwoods so you can't see it as, see it as well as you can right now. Um, we may end up with containers out here, who knows. But while we're out here, I did wanna show you this Stand By Me Clematis because it is looking just stunning right now. Just absolutely stunning. Now I do need to stake it it is a bush type clematis look at this bush type clematis but it does prefer to have a little bit of support you can tell we've had a lot of rain because the front two uh, have kind of split a little bit but it won't be a big deal i'll come in with my supports and just kind of prop them back up and then around the base i have orange smoothie day lilies and usually the stand by me clematis is in bloom for us almost all season long and so we'll get that really beautiful light orange daylily with the blue clematis and it's just a stunning area also at last rose is blooming hold on at last rose i did not even deadhead or cut these back at all you guys look there's last year's blooms <laughs> so sometimes i don't even maintain things so these have uh, really done well for being completely ignored back here anyway thought you guys might enjoy seeing that little corner and i hope you enjoyed seeing these next three arrangements come together it's so fun to do things on this scale and just have this area be full of color right here so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye